Rollers are an integral part of a road maintenance or construction project. Without a roller in good operating condition, many road maintenance activities would be seriously delayed or possibly come to a complete stop until the roller is repaired. What can you do to help keep your equipment working at its best? Simply by following your daily operator maintenance procedures. Each agency will have their own specific maintenance activities and each equipment manufacturer has its recommended procedures. It is your responsibility to ensure that none of the special requirements for your machine are overlooked. This videotape will show the general methods and procedures for operator maintenance on a daily basis. But more important, it tells you why these procedures are necessary. A good way to follow these maintenance procedures is by using a checkoff list. By using a checkoff list, you can divide your daily checks into four groups of activities. The pre-start check, the warm-up check, the daily operating check, and the shutdown check. If during these activities problems are discovered, follow your local guidelines to determine corrective procedures. Now, let us look at these activities in detail. The first activity is the pre-start check. The pre-start check is a walk around inspection for damaged or worn parts and fluid leaks. It also includes checking the roller's fluid levels and the engine's air filter system. Starting at the wheels, inspect the condition of the steel wheels for excessive wear or flat spots, which can leave unwanted marks on the finished road surface. If your roller has a vibratory compaction system like this machine, you will also need to inspect the rubber wheel mounts. These mounts isolate the machine from the vibratory rollers and if damaged, can result in equipment failure. If your roller has pneumatic tires, at this time you would check the air pressure in each to make sure that it is at the recommended pressure. If your roller is equipped with cocoa mats, make sure that they are in good working condition. Also make sure that the wheel scrapers are properly adjusted and in good condition. The cocoa mats, along with the scrapers, help keep the wheels clean during compaction, creating a smooth surface and a job well done. As you continue along with the pre-start check, you can begin to include the inspection for fluid leaks. Fluid leaks can affect the safe and efficient operation of your roller. Often leakage can be found by looking on the ground directly under the equipment. If you see any wet spots or stains, look above the spot to locate its source. Further inspection for fluid leaks will bring you to the components in and around the engine compartment. Fuel and oil leaks may occur at the filter bowl seals or at connections. Feel the bottom of the oil and fuel filter bowls to see if there is any fluid running down the side of the bowls. The same type of inspection can be given to the equipment's hydraulic system. As with fuel and oil components, Feel the filter bowls for possible leaks. The hydraulic hoses and hose connections should be inspected for leakage. You should also examine the hoses for any cuts or breaks. Now inspect the fan belts. The fan forces air through the radiator for engine cooling. Belts are needed to drive the fan. These belts should be inspected. Make sure that the belt tension is within your equipment's specification. Look for any wear or cracking that could cause belt failure. A well-adjusted belt in good condition will provide better service to the cooling system. Having finished these inspections on this side of the roller, many of the same inspections should be carried out on the opposite side of the engine. Once having exposed the components, inspect the filter bowls, lines, and connections in the same manner as before. 
The cooling system should also be checked for any leakage. The radiator and radiator hoses should be examined carefully. Now, this series of leak checks can be marked off on the list, but there are still some additional pre-start checks needed. You must be certain that the fluids are at the correct operating levels. Proper fluid levels are necessary for the safe and efficient operation of your roller. Let us look at each of these fluid levels. Begin in the engine compartment with the oil level. The oil must be at the proper level on the dipstick. If oil is needed, add the proper type and amount before starting the engine. Important additional inspections are at the battery. This battery is securely fastened to a movable frame. Make sure your battery is secure in its compartment. Inspect the battery cables, clamps, and connections for corrosion. Make sure cables are secure. Next, inspect the battery fluid level. If needed, fill each cell to just above the top of the battery plates and separators with distilled water. Never fill battery cells to the top of the filler neck. Your agency will have guidelines for working with batteries. Make sure you follow them. A word of caution. Batteries give off explosive gas. There should be no flame or smoking permitted around the battery. Every day during the pre-start inspection, condensation and sediment should be drained from the fuel tank. To do this, a drain cock is provided at the bottom of the tank. Open the drain until all condensation and sediment have been removed. Never perform this operation while smoking or with an open flame in the area. Next, check the level of the sprinkler system storage tanks. Make sure that they are full at the start of each working day. If necessary, fill each tank with clean water. Clean water will help prevent the sprinkler nozzles from clogging. Our operator has found these fluid levels to be correct. His next inspection will be to check the fluid level in the hydraulic oil tank. A dipstick or sight gauge is provided for this inspection. In this case, it is a sight gauge. Hydraulic fluid is necessary for the proper operation of the roller. As with the engine oil, the proper type and amount of hydraulic fluid is needed. Now the level of the coolant in the radiator should be checked. Make sure that it is at the level required for your particular machine as specified by your supervisor. Add more coolant if needed. However, if the engine has recently been operated, the coolant will be under pressure. This pressure, if released by removing the cap, could cause serious injury to you. Now, an inspection of the engine's air filter system can be done. Start with the pre-cleaner bowl. The pre-cleaner picks up large dirt and dust particles. If dust or other material have accumulated in the bowl, clean it. Dump out the dirt and wipe the bowl with a clean rag. Be careful if the pre-cleaner is plastic. It can crack or break if you hit it against a hard surface. Daily cleaning of the pre-cleaner will greatly reduce the clogging of the air cleaner elements. Your roller may be equipped with an air cleaner indicator. This indicator warns you when to replace the air cleaner element. If the indicator shows red, the operator should replace the air cleaner element. If no new elements are available, notify your supervisor. In the interim, the operator should clean the old element in the following manner. To clean a dirty element, Remove it. 
and tap the element with the palm of your hand. Don't pound it on a hard surface. It could damage the element. Compressed air, if available, is a much more effective way to clean the element. When cleaning the element with compressed air, you should direct the air up and down the pleats and blow from the inside to the outside. The element can be checked to see if it is clean by placing a light bulb inside and viewing the penetration of light through the pleated paper of the element. When the cleaning is complete, reinstall the element, making sure that the housing is correctly sealed. This will ensure proper air filtration through the system. If the indicator still reads red, do not operate your roller. Never operate the engine without the element in place, as this can cause extensive engine damage. Your final pre-start check is just before you start your engine. At this time, you should record your engine hour meter reading. It will determine when you need to notify your supervisor that periodic maintenance is needed. In the next segment, we will begin warm-up activities. But before going on, you may wish to stop the videotape at this point and review the pre-start steps just covered. In the last segment, we finished our pre-start check. Now let us begin the second activity. The second activity is the equipment warm-up check. The equipment warm-up check helps you determine if the roller is operating properly before you leave the parking area. It is good practice to see that all persons are clear of the roller. All control levers are in the neutral position and the parking brake is on before starting the engine. Once this has been done, start your engine. Let the engine warm up for five to 10 minutes. This time varies depending on weather conditions. The warm up time allows the oil pressure to build up and lubricate all the moving parts of the engine and the cooling system to reach operating temperatures. Listen for unusual noises. If something does not sound correct, shut the equipment down and call your supervisor immediately. During the warm-up period, you should monitor equipment performance. The panel gauges are provided to help you do this. Let us read these gauges. Does the amp meter read on the positive side? Is the oil pressure in the safe zone? Is the fuel tank gauge functioning? Is the tank full? Is the engine temperature gauge reading in the safe zone? Is the hydraulic oil temperature gauge in its safe zone? Each of the steel wheels is fitted with a water sprinkler spray bar. With the engine running, turn on the water to these bars and check to see that all nozzles are spraying. Make sure that all the spray bar nozzles are properly adjusted to provide an even flow across the surface of the rollers. For the next warm-up check, test the braking system. Release the parking brake. Put the roller in motion. On this roller, the hydrostatic drive system is used to stop the roller. Does the system provide safe braking at the roller operating speed? The steering is part of the hydraulic system. Turn the steering wheel first one way and then the other. It should have a smooth and even movement in response to your controls. Testing the vibratory system is the final warm-up check. When you engage the system, does the wheel vibrate uniformly? The correct compaction of material depends on this system working properly. All these checks are critical to safe and efficient roller operation. Do not leave the parking area until the list has been completed and all the checks have proven satisfactory.
There is an additional activity that must be carried out. The third operator maintenance activity, the daily operating check, is carried out while the roller is working. During these operations, you should monitor its performance. Specifically, listen for unusual noises, read your gauges, and be aware of changes in the performance. We can look at these individually. Listen for unusual engine and equipment noises. These noises warn us of problems that could damage the roller. Look at your gauges during operations. Watch pressure and temperature closely. If there are any abnormal gauge readings, shut down and check the system. Notify your supervisor. Your roller may have water storage tank sight gauges. These gauges will indicate when refilling the tanks is necessary. Also, be aware of changes in your equipment's performance. Report any changes. The fourth and last daily maintenance activity is your shutdown check. The shutdown check helps prepare your roller for the following workday. First, find a level area to park your equipment. Set the parking brake and let the engine idle for approximately five minutes before shutting down. After the engine has been turned off, record the time registered on the hour meter. This is important for keeping a record for your equipment's periodic preventive maintenance. At the end of the day, it is good practice to completely fill your fuel tank. This minimizes the amount of condensation buildup. When doing this, be sure all fueling equipment is clean. This prevents any contaminants from entering the fuel tank. Since these are flammable liquids, do not smoke or have an open flame in the area. Now, using a grease gun, grease the mechanical joints. Proper lubrication extends the operating life of your roller. Follow your equipment's guidelines for proper lubrication procedures. One way to make it easier for you to identify the daily lubrication points is to have them marked. Finally, clean away any dirt or asphalt material from the wheels, scrapers, and the rest of the equipment. That completes the detailed description of the four major daily operator maintenance activities. Let us review each activity once more. The first activity is the pre-start check. This is a walk-around inspection looking for damaged or worn parts, such as steel wheels and sprinkler systems. It included checks for fluid leaks in the cooling, hydraulic, engine and brake systems. Also, fluid levels, such as oil, coolant, and hydraulics were checked. And finally, the engine's air filter system was inspected. The second activity is the warm-up check. This is made from the operator's station while the engine is warming up. Listen for unusual engine noises. Read the panel gauges and test the brakes and steering before leaving the parking area. Be sure to check the sprinkler system. The third activity is the daily operations check. During the workday, you should listen for unusual noises and monitor the gauges. Also, be aware of changes in the performance of the equipment. If you discover any problems, stop the roller immediately and notify your supervisor. The fourth and last activity is the end of day check. Park the equipment on a level surface. Set the parking brake. Idle the engine for approximately five minutes prior to shutdown. Record your hour meter reading. Fill the fuel tank. Lubricate your equipment and clean away dirt and debris. This videotape has included general maintenance procedures. 
and may be modified to meet the individual requirements of your agency. There may be additional safety checks required. Follow your operator guidelines. This concludes the videotape on roller operator daily maintenance. Following these procedures will help ensure that your roller is properly maintained and stays in good operating condition.